In this video series, we are building an XSD file that validates an XML file, and we're building them both simultaneously. We've made quite a bit of progress so far in our previous videos by building out this uh, XSD file that describes this Plant Places XML definition document. So we're going to go to a fairly complex part right now, which is a repeating group of specimens. So as I have it defined, a plant is the scientific definition of a plant, a genus, species, and cultivar that describes any plant that matches this genus, genus and species around the world. In other words, red oak. We know what a red oak is, a Quercus rubra, and any red oak around the world can be described as Quercus rubra. Now we're taking a look at specimens, where a specimen is an individual red oak or red bud or pawpaw tree uh, that you can touch that's at a specific location. So it's going to have latitude and longitude. Now, uh, what we'll do is a fairly common syntax. We'll start with one element, which is specimens plural, and that will contain a repeating group of individual specimen elements. The individual specimen elements will have latitude, longitude, planted by, and comments. Now this is a bit of a tricky thing to visualize because we're starting to nest. We're starting to go from what was a very flat XML document with everything tabbed in at one location. What we're going to do now is say specimens, and I'll go ahead and kind of draw this out. And then within that, we're going to have specimen. And then within specimen, we're going to have latitude, Okay, whoops, we'll keep that on one line. And we're going to have longitude. Okay, and close that. And then we have uh, planted by, I believe was another one. Okay, and that closes. And what was our other one? Comments. Okay, so uh, comments. Now, what makes this interesting, as I said, it is a repeating group. This XML document is describing an eastern redbud tree. There are millions of eastern redbud trees around the world, each one of those an individual specimen. So you see that I can repeat this concept of specimen and essentially have one of these records for each of those redbud specimens that's around the world. Now, let's try to simplify things a little bit. If I make a new document and we look only at this XML, let's just focus on this for the moment. Let's make a type that describes this XML. Now, the reason why I'm kind of pulling this one aside is you notice our XSD document is starting to get rather long. So one option that we have is we can make a type separately. We can define our own type. And in this case, I'm going to define uh, the type. I'm going to define essentially the element called specimen. So I'll say XS colon element uh, and Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to say, I'm going to change this just a little bit. XS colon complex type. Okay, there we go. And um, name equals, I'm going to call this specimen type. So what's going on here? Well, you see, I'm kind of out of the flow of the normal XSD document. And previously in our XSD document, we've had a type called date, a type called Boolean, a type called integer, type called string. What I'm doing now is I'm defining my own type. I'm calling it just specimen type, okay? So within this, I need to describe the elements that are owned by the specimen. So uh, latitude, longitude, planted by, and comments. So what I can do is I can borrow a little bit of logic I did several videos ago. Uh, we have our excess complex type. Remember within that we have an excess sequence, which means each of these elements in the predefined order. Within that we have a series of elements. So within my complex type, I'm going to say XS colon sequence. Okay, and there we go. Within XS sequence, I'm going to say XS colon element. Okay, and let's remember how this works. We say name equals, and our first element is latitude. Oh, need to put that in quotes, don't we? And let me zoom up so you can see a little better. Latitude, okay. And what do we know about latitude? Latitude should be of type decimal and it's optional. So XS colon type uh, equals, uh, let's say, uh, how do we wanna do, right, I'm sorry, I, I knew something felt funny there. Type equals XS colon decimal, okay. And then we'll say, we'll borrow a min occurs, which means it's an optional uh, statement. So min occurs equals zero. 
There we go. We take this. We just drop it right here. There we go. Uh, so that sets us up for latitude. Let me indent that so it's a bit more visible, a bit easier to see. I'll copy this because longitude is going to be very similar. So copy this. And notice it's just word wrapping. No, don't worry about the, the kind of funny way. Actually, you know what I can do to keep this on one line? Yeah, I have an idea. Let's make it a self-closing tag. That'll make a little more efficient use of space and keep it on one line. But I do need to terminate that quote. Okay, there we go. So now we say longitude is a decimal. Okay, and what else did we have? We have planted by max length 255 and comments max length uh, 1024. We know that max length is a little bit tricky, so I'm simply going to borrow the max length I did for genus. I'm going to copy that and we will paste that twice down here and just repurpose it a little bit. So let's uh, let's see, let's try and tab it out just a bit better. Okay, so tab there. So genus and genus one more time, but again, we're just borrowing the kind of the max length syntax we saw. Again, let me align it a little bit better. String is fine. Okay, so we had comments and planted by, right? Just double check. Yeah, planted by and comments. So we'll say element name equals planted underscore by. And we said the length for that is 255. And then the other one we said is going to be comments. Okay, spelled correctly. And we set a max length on that of 124, uh, 1024, just like so. So now we've defined this specimen type. But once again, notice we've kind of put it out here in no man's land. We've just kind of put it outside of the flow of our root element called plant. So now we need to include it into that flow. So uh, let's see, sequence, uh, yes, right there, element bloom color. Okay, so right after bloom color, I'm going to say xs colon complex type, and this one's going to be name equals, well, let's see, it is specimens, so name equals specimens. Okay, let that go ahead and terminate. Uh, within that, we are going to say xs sequence. Okay, just like we've seen before. So again, we're only, we're only representing right now the plural type specimens, which I see now I have misquoted. I'm sure you saw that uh, before I did. So uh, double quote, just like so. Okay, within the sequence, we're going to have one element. And the element is going to be xs colon complex type name equals specimen singular. Okay, so remember where we are. We're going from the enclosing specimens tag to the repeating specimen singular tag. So complex type name equals specimen type equals, now look at this, specimen type. Okay, so you see what's happening here is we're saying here's our, sing here's our singular specimens tag. Within that we have a repeating specimen tag. What's in the repeating specimen tag? Well, whatever's declared by specimen type. What's in specimen type? All of this stuff that we defined earlier. And by the way, I do notice I'm, I keep making that same mistake. I need to add the minicurs value here. So boom, there we go. And boom, there we go to make these two elements optional. So essentially, this type that we've kind of defined over here on the side, we're bringing in right here by saying that a specimen is a repeating specimen type. I, it's, sorry, I know it's hard to explain, hard to understand, but we're saying when you wonder what a specimen is, look down here at line 76. This will tell you what a specimen is. Now, specimen, uh, first of all, specimens we're going to say is optional, so we'll give that a min occurs of zero. Uh, specimen is a repeating group, so we'll say min occurs equals one, which means provided that we have specimens, we better have at least one specimen. And then we'll say max occurs. And then we'll say for that, that's an interesting one because what we can, oops, sorry, what we can say for that is unbounded. And that means as many as we want, that indicates that it is a repeating list. A quick note here, I realize I made a little mistake. The min occurs does not belong on excess restriction. I wasn't looking carefully. It belongs on the excess element. So let me fix that before moving forward. If I don't do it now, it's going to start bothering me. And there we go. Uh, so that is fixed. One other, and apologies for this one as well. Uh, I should include excess complex type and excess element. Once again, you might have noticed that before I did. 
uh, this all when a document gets long like this, uh, everything starts to look alike all of a sudden, and it's easy to put something on the wrong place. So let me just quickly fix that. So excess complex type, we're going to just take that, leave that as it's, as it is, and then we'll make a new excess element tag uh, with name equals specimens, just like so. And we save. And just one more correction, excess complex type uh, should be element, excess element, just like so. So we're defining the element called specimen. The type here, specimen type, that's what describes this as a complex type. So once again, just a little mismatch I had there, but at this point we are all good. Apologies if I kind of set you off the wrong way on that a little bit early. With that, let's go back and validate now. Uh, let me make sure I saved, and we'll go back and we'll validate plants XML. Uh, go to validate now, and it's good. I put in a bit of data here just to verify things, but we see sure enough, we are in good shape. Now, let's make sure that the validation truly works. And so what I want to do is I want to put in some invalid data. We know latitude has to be a decimal, so I'll just put in some junk that's not a decimal. And we should see a validation fail when I go to validate now. Yep, sure enough, you notice it's thrown all those out because it says these are not decimal types. So we revert back, we put in some numbers, just like we have there. Not real latitude and longitude, but they are numbers. I mean, I suppose that that is a real latitude and longitude somewhere in the world. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, validate now. Okay, XML schema is valid. And what if we put in an element that doesn't exist? So foo and bar and save. Let's just make sure that sure enough, we have constrained this to the right. Yep, sure enough, foo was not expected because in our complex type called specimen type, we have not defined an element named foo, so that won't work. Okay, you see we do have a repeating group of specimens, just as we said. We said that that could repeat because there are many, many specimens of redbud around the world. What if I take out that repeating group and I just have open specimens, closed specimen? Let's take a look at that. Okay, missing child elements, expected is specimen. And once again, the reason there is we have said that uh, the specimen will belong in the specimens element. We must have at least one. We can have unbounded, which means we can have as many as we wish. So I can go ahead and put these two specimens back. If I want, I can add yet another specimen. And now we have our repeating group. So we'll do one more like so, oops, like so, and save. And sure enough, validate now, and we're looking good. So in this video, we've seen how to define our own type over and above string, date, Boolean, integer, the ones that we've seen so far. We've seen how to make our own complex type here and then how to refer to that complex type up above in our normal flow. In other words, what I have between excess sequence here is everything you see between line 78 and 97. I would get the same effect if I took this copied it and pasted it right here. But you see, by pulling it out of line, by putting it down lower in the document, it makes our document up above a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to read. So this wraps up our discussion on XSD. I believe this is about the sixth or seventh video. Uh, if you've been watching the series, it is part of a playlist. If you want to see the other videos, they all work in order. So once again, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for listening.